Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 8.7, control of non-conforming outputs. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand and implement into your own organization or industry. This clause starts off with subclause 871. The organization shall ensure that outputs that do not conform to their requirements are identified and controlled to prevent their unintended use or delivery. Okay, let's stop there and confirm what this means before we move on further. This is just saying that we are required to identify when we have produced our product or service and it does not meet the customer or other interested parties requirements. When we do identify it, we need to take action to control it so that we stop it from happening again. Now, let's move on to the next part of this clause where it states that the organization shall take appropriate action based on the nature of the non-conformity and its effect on the conformity of products and services. This shall also apply to non-conforming products and services detected after delivery of products, during or after the provision of services. And then to help us even more, the clause gives us a list of what these appropriate actions could be. So let's work our way through these one by one. The clause states that the organization shall deal with non-conforming outputs in one or more of the following ways. A, correction. Okay, this is simply fixing it. So if we had a product or item that was manufactured and it was meant to be painted green, however, it came out red, we could put it back through the machine or the process and paint it green. That's a correction. Of course, we would only select this option if we could repaint the item and it didn't impact the functionality of the item. Then we move on to the next option, which is B, segregation, containment, return, or suspension of provision of products and services. Now, we have this red product or item that is not conforming because it was meant to be green. We are not able to repaint it, as in my first example, because it would impact the functionality of the product. So, our option then is to segregate or contain the item. This means we would quarantine it and even possibly tag it out so it's not be used or it's not sent out to a customer. The next option this clause gives us is C, informing the customer. So of course, if our customer specifically requested this product to be green and we're not able to repaint it again, we would communicate this to the customer so they are kept in the loop of what the corrective action will be which does lead into point D, obtaining authorization for acceptance under concession, which means that possibly the customer is okay for the product to be red instead of green. It doesn't really impact the use of the product and they are happy to accept it under this concession. In this instance, they might receive a discount or a credit for goodwill and customer relations, of course. But the point is that the customer will take possession of the item, even if it doesn't meet their initial requirements. You may find that some of these options are relevant to your products or services, and some are not. And remember, these non-conformities could be detected before the product is sent to the customer or after. Regardless of the time frame for identification, the same options are to be considered. Then the next and final statement in this subclause of 871 states that conformity to the requirements shall be verified when non-conforming outputs are corrected. Meaning that when you do take action to rectify or correct a non-conformity, you should check that the product or item continues to meet all of the requirements again. So if you are able to repaint the red product green, then all of the normal quality checks at this point are to be followed. Nothing changes. We then move on to the second subclause of 872, where it states that 
the organisation shall retain documented information that A, describes the non-conformity, B, describes the actions taken, C, describes any concessions obtained, D, identifies the authority deciding the action in respect of the non-conformity. Okay, we need to retain some evidence of any non-conformities that are identified. This is normally something that is maintained in a non-conformance register or improvement register. You can call it what you want, really. This <laughs> register should include what the non-conformity was, what actions were taken. Remember, from correction, segregation, informing the customer or acceptance of the product under concession, as I explained earlier. And finally, who has authorised the final action or actions to be taken? If you maintain a register, then this is perfectly fine to meet this documented information requirement. And don't forget it helps you to monitor and analyse your non-conformances and improve your systems, which is ultimately what we want to achieve, isn't it? Now, now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognised training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enrol in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognised qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.